Joining us now, Democratic Senator Michael Bennett of Colorado. Uh, I would love to talk to you about how this could impact intelligence and uh, ultimately impact global security. Well, you know, on that happy note, on that report, I think it's a reminder yeah. that it's a reminder that we w we didn't even regulate the social media platforms I properly know. here in this country, and my constituents are demanding that we finally put the American people in a negotiation with these massive tech platforms. And now you have Sam Altman himself saying that we should be regulating AI, which is the new newest iteration of that. This is why I have long said, Mirka, that we should have a new agency like the FDA, like the FCC, to do, to do the regulation from antitrust to the national security issues that you raise, to the mental health issues that are of huge concern to me as a former school superintendent. Anybody who's raised, parent, uh, raised kids during this era of social media knows that there has been a mental health effect that has ripped through adolescents all across our country, and we've done nothing about it. So I think maybe this is an opportunity when we could come together as Democrats and Republicans, stand up for the American people, say to our teenage kids that we're not expecting their student councils to negotiate these deals with Mark Zuckerberg and, and others, and that we're actually going to put, just as we have with all new technologies that have come forward, we're not going to accept the idea that this is the end of humanity or that we can't somehow regulate this in a way that makes sense. But we are going to put, you know, this democracy in a negotiation with these large tech platforms and, in some cases, the pirates that run them. Senator Bennett, good morning. I mean, AI morning. right now is touching every field. It's touching academics. It's touching journalism. Elon Musk says there's a non-zero chance it will end the world. But I was hoping you could talk a little bit about how it's impacting your profession, politics, as we're heading into another election year and the fears, the rising fears that AI could be used, AI and deep fake technologies could be used for nefarious purposes in political ads. There's, there's deep concern about that. I mean, I think it's only one, one dimension of what we're dealing with, but that's a concerning one. And we are already feeling, as anybody who was here on January 6th was feeling, we are already feeling the effects of technology corroding our democracy. And this is a time, just as we have at other eras in American history, when we're going to have to stand up to the for the democracy and protect the democracy against these deep fakes. That's another thing where I think you know, we need to legislate. But what I worry about is a situation where Congress decides that that's the most important thing, or Congress decides that antitrust is the most important thing, or that mental health is. It would be a miracle if we were able to do any one of those things. But the reality is we have to cover the waterfront. And the only way we're going to do that is with a new agency that's dedicated to this. You know, that is the only way we're going to do it. If we had if we had decided that Congress was going to approve and disapprove all new drugs, all new medications, uh, can you imagine what a disaster that would have been? And here we're in a situation where the technology is moving much more quickly, much more rapidly. And, and, and this is why we need to have a body of experts in Washington, D.C. to get this done. And I think we can get it done. Senator, what do we do about uh, the fact that uh, elements of this technology, elements of artificial intelligence, are already here? And given corporate human nature, it might be that instead of having 150 people working in the front office, that some aspect of artificial intelligence can be used to say, well, maybe we only need 75 people. And people lose their jobs almost overnight due to technology. I think, Mike, I think you're already seeing that danger. I was, I was with some people last night, you know, having conversations about this. And, the, and there is the prospect in real time right now of, of both white collar and blue collar jobs going away in this transition. We've faced technological upheavals before in general. We've been able to overcome those upheavals, but there's nothing that guarantees we're going to be able to figure that out. And I think that's another reason why you know, we can't be missing in action on this. Washington's got to be here. We've got that can't be the last hearing that we have. You know, this is something that we need to be focused on uh, month after month after month until we put in place 
a regulatory framework that can actually ask and answer all of these questions. There's going to be disruption. There's no question about it. And there's going to be upside. But when the people that are involved in this themselves, the, the investors themselves are saying there is a non-trivial chance that this could disrupt all of humanity, or in the words of Elon Musk, end humanity, you know, we ought to be paying attention to that. Senator, before you go, I just want to ask you about uh, your colleague, uh, your Republican colleague, Senator Tommy Tuberville, and the issue of abortion um, that he apparently is using to even block military nominations, among other things. What is going on? Can you explain exactly I, I can't. what's happening? I can't. Yeah. In the history of America, no senator has ever used their hold to, to hold up all the flag promotions at the Department of Defense. Tommy Tuberville is the first senator to do that. And why is he doing it? He's mad because the Department of Defense has said that if you are in the military and you need an abortion, we will pay for you to travel to another state. We will, we will allow you to have uh, paid leave instead of unpaid leave. And we're going to let you have a little extra time before you have to tell your commanding officer. That's it. It's not paying for abortion. It's not anything else. It's those three things. And he wants to make it harder for people that are confronted with that incredibly difficult choice. So this is the aftermath of a 50-year campaign to overturn mm -hmm. Roe versus Wade, to strip the American people of their first freedom, our first fundamental right since Reconstruction in this country. And they've won that battle for the moment. There are 18 states that have banned abortion since Roe was overturned, nine with no exceptions for rape or incest. The state Tommy Tuberville comes from, Alabama, is a state that has no exceptions for rape or incest. And if you are a doctor, you're going to jail for 99 years. You can't. You're subject to 99 years if you perform an abortion. And what he's saying <laughs> is that service men and women, service women in particular, who don't choose where they're going to serve, that if you are serving in a place like Alabama, we can't even pay for you to go from one state to another as we can for other medical procedures like, you know, getting your foot operated on or right. or, or or having it, your your appendix out. So, you know, we were battling this out on the floor last night for an hour. I, I feel like my colleague is in this horrible cul-de-sac because he's taken a position that's so unpopular with the American people that I, it's almost hard to understand. And he's using a remedy, holding up every single promotion of the U.S. flag officers that is that is staggering in, in its implications. Seven former secretaries of defense, Republicans and Democrats, have said that this is affecting our military readiness. And by the way, Mirka, I would say the Supreme Court's decision overturning Roe versus Wade, among many other things it's done to this country, is sacrificed our military readiness as well. So we've, we're going to have to overcome this. And, and this is going to be a long, long fight that we have to win. Democratic Senator Michael Bennett, thank you very much uh, for being on the show this morning. And